Welcome back, Canaanites. Today saw the release of the official Halo Wars 2 launch trailer, and as always, we're gonna break it down. Now, there's a good portion of clips from previous trailers or Vidocs, such as stuff from the E3 trailer or the Atriox trailer, and I will be skipping over that, focusing on any new footage. So, with that, let's take a look. Although, viewer beware, potential spoilers ahead. So, after a series of clips that we've either seen before or are from scenes that we've seen before but don't have any real discussion value, we get this scene of Let Valir bowing to Atriox. There's not a lot to talk about in the scene itself, it's just a new scene from when Isabel explains Atriox's backstory, and it's worth pointing out. What I find really interesting, though, is the following scene when we see Enduring Conviction, Let's CAS Assault Carrier, and an unnamed CCS-class battlecruiser, two planets or a planet and a moon behind that, and some presumably Covenant station in the foreground. It's hard to say what the station is, though the imagery reminds me of the scene from the Halo 2 Anniversary Terminals with the Sungheili Arbiters bowing to the Prophets. I don't imagine that's a mistake. Looking at the planets or planet in the background, it's hard to say. I'm reminded of the scene from the Atriox trailer, set on some unknown planet, presumably a human colony, that I for some reason originally identified as the Crash CAS carrier on the Ark. God knows why. Anyway, I can't help but wonder if the planet that we're seeing here is meant to be that same colony that we saw Atriox and his banished ransacking in the Atriox trailer. Moving on, the next scenes show the spirit engaging in Enduring Conviction, or rather, its Banshees. Based on what you can make out of the audio, notably a mention of multiple breaches, it's not going good for the spirit. One thing a lot of people have been wondering is how the spirit would be able to take on Enduring Conviction, and this trailer may actually give us a hint. In later scenes, we can see Sentinels crashing themselves into Enduring Conviction. From the Blitz beta, we know that Anders is actually able to hack the Ark systems and take control of Sentinels, even Retrievers. I'm guessing that this is how the spirit will be able to, to some degree, level the playing field. The next scene of interest is the trail end of a speech from Cutter. For context, when Isabel is brought on board the spirit, she tells Cutter to run. Cutter instead gives a rousing speech, which ends with these lines. Where you see half a crew, Isabel, I see family. And where you see one old ship, I see home. And that is always worth fighting for. I've made note of my displeasure over the Cutter redesign, but when I heard this speech, I was sold. This man is Cutter for me. Moving on, you probably saw some interesting scenes during that Cutter monologue. First, let's talk about the Halo Ring. I've been saying since the first trailer to show the arc that there was a Halo Ring in there, and now we can see it launching. There's a mass of blue energy that could either be the ring charging up or perhaps a slipspace portal, but it's hard to say, at least for now. What really interests me, though, is which ring this is. The two popular theories are 1. Installation 03, which disappeared after the next 72-hour story arc from Halo Escalation, or 2. A third Alpha Halo, or Installation 04C. For the longest time, I've been a fan of the Installation 03 theory, mainly because I want to go to Gamma Halo and I want to see Static Krillian, the former monitor of the Composer's Forge and the one who disappeared with Installation 03. However, a major problem with that theory was recently pointed out by CIA 391. Static Krillian, much like the Halo Installation monitors, shouldn't know where the Ark is. The Halo monitors all had their memories compartmentalized in case they were ever captured by the Flood, and logically, one would assume that this would apply to Static Krillian too. There's always some way that 343 could explain how Krillian knows where the Ark is, but it's certainly an issue with the theory at the moment. Recently as well, the idea of an Installation 04C has started to have more appeal than it did before. I've been racking my brain over what Atriox could want with the Ark beyond just power and resources, when an idea came to mind. What if Atriox initiated the construction of this new Halo Ring? What if he came to the Ark to get his own galactic-scale WMD? I can imagine he'd be more than willing to force humans to get the systems going to build the Ring, so it's definitely a possibility. Whatever the case is with this Ring, I can't wait to see it in-game, and I'm really hoping it has some connection to the legendary ending for Halo 5. Anyway, next, let's talk about a series of scenes. In the first, we see Isabel in what looks like some sort of system with these two orbs. Later on, we see her struggling as if firing some weapon. I've seen some people theorize that she's firing the Halo Ring, but I have my doubts. My guess is that she's in Enduring Conviction Systems and firing its glassing beam. 
There are some scenes of the beam firing, and one shows brute forces being disintegrated by the ship's plasma. Unless Leadvalier is going to betray Atriox, which could honestly go either way, but I'm kind of leaning towards no these days. I think that Isabel taking over the ship's systems is the most likely explanation for this scene. I'm willing to bet that at some point, we're going to be putting Isabel into Enduring Conviction systems to take advantage of the superior firepower. The next scene of interest shows the spirit directly over the Ark's forge, the core world mined to hell, under attack from Banshees. After that, we have a Spartan shooting a brute with a shotgun, clearly surrounded by other brutes. Maybe a Spartan gets captured or has to infiltrate a banished held base. Who knows? Next, we get a brute forcibly opening what is clearly a Covenant door. Maybe this is after Enduring Conviction is taken over by Isabel, assuming my earlier theory is true. The brutes are definitely running through with urgency, either running towards or away from something. After that, we get this really interesting scene of a Spartan, I'm guessing Jerome, looking out over a deck that's been cut in half. It's really hard to tell if this is the spirit enduring conviction or maybe some other vessel. The floor definitely looks to have a hexagonal pattern, so I'm guessing this is at the very least a Covenant ship. The next scene is pretty awesome, as we see Jerome landing on the Halo Ring. You can see the curved horizon off to the left. I don't know what we'll be doing here, but I can't wait to play a Halo RTS on an actual Halo Ring, even if it's only for like a single level or something. And finally, the trailer comes to an end with Isabel saying, It's time to show them what power really means around here. I can't wait to see that in context. Maybe it's right before she hijacks Enduring Conviction? We'll see. And that does it for this trailer breakdown. This is one hell of a launch trailer. I will say that I wasn't the biggest fan of the inclusion of the E3 footage since it's just a trailer made wholesale for E3 and won't be in the final game at all, and I'm not really a fan of the generic action movie music that, honestly, all Halo Wars 2 trailers have been using. Still, the scene selection is enough to get you hyped and I am certainly hyped for this game. We're just over a week from launch for the Ultimate Edition purchasers and a full two weeks for anyone else. How are you feeling about Halo Wars 2? Hyped? Skeptical? In between? Something else? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.